This is 5.1 skeletal system notes. The essential question is, what are the functions of the skeletal system and what are different ways that bone are categorized? The skeletal system is made up of four main organs. The major portion of that is skeleton, which there are 206 bones in the adult human. Joints are connection between bones, two or more bones. Cartilage is found at the ends of bones and their job is to reduce friction. Ligaments are organs that connect bone to bone and remember they are made up of a dense connective tissue and remember cartilage is made up of the ones that are surrounding the ends of the bones are made up of hyaline cartilage. The skeletal system is divided into two major areas the axial skeleton which is made up of the bones of the face, the skull, the vertebrae or the spine, the sternum which is the breastbone, the ribs, and the sacrum which is the bone that make up the small of the back, and the appendicular skeleton which are all of the bones that make up the pectoral and the pelvic girdle, all of the bo bones that make up the extremities which are your arms and legs, and also bones in the hands and feet. Here is a picture of the skeleton and notice that the bones in the orange color are the bones that make up the axial skeleton. They include bones like all of the bones of the cranium or the skull which are your frontal, temporal, parietal and occipital bones. The bones of the vertebrae Remember, there's the cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae, and then this portion here is the sacrum. Then the bones that make up the sternum, which is your breastbone, the bones that make up all of the ribs, even the bone that you uh, kind of shows you here is a bone that's right underneath the, the jaw, right on the neck, is also called a hyoid bone. All those bones make up the axial skeleton. The rest of the bones that make up the the pectoral girdle, which are the clavicle and the scapula and the bones of the arms, the coxal bone, which are the bones that make up the hip joint and all of the bones in the leg and the foot, those are all considered axial skeleton, appendicular skeleton. Functions of the skeleton include support, which means it provides a framework or shape to the body. Think of the shape of the head is determined by the shape of the cranium and the facial bones, and your body structure depends by the frame of the bones. Also protection, which means that bone is hard, so uh, it's going to protect the underlying organs, like the cranium protecting the brain, the rib cage protecting the heart and the lungs, the pelvic bone protecting the reproductive organs. Also helps in movement because muscles attach to bone and when muscles contract, it moves the bone and therefore cause movement. Another function is storage. It stores minerals like calcium and phosphate and stores fat. And, and the last function is blood cell formation, also called hematopoiesis, which means that in the red marrow, there is uh, red blood cells are being formed. Bones are classified according to their shape. So a long bone classification means that the bones are going to be longer in length when you compare to them to the width. Typical structure that you will see is a rounded portion called the head and then the long body of the bone which is called the shaft. Bones that belong to the long bone category are femur which is your thigh bone humerus which is your arm bone, radius and ulna which are your forearm bones, metatarsals which are the bones that make up the foot, and metacarpals which make up the bones in the palm of your hands. The bones that belong to the short bone category means that the bones, the length and the width are going to be relatively equal. Bones that belong to this short bone category would be bones of the carpals which make up the wrist, bones of the tarsals which are bones that make up the ankle, patella is your kneecap bone, and calcaneus is your heel bone. Talus, 
belongs to the part of the tarsal bone and capitate bone is one of the wrist bones. Flat bone, like the word says, is going to be flat in appearance and examples of the bone that belong to the flat bone is skull bone, which are your frontal, parietal, temporal, and the occipital bone, mandible, which is your lower jaw bone, ribs, and the sternum, which is your breastbone, and then also you have here the scapula, also belong to the flat bone category. Irregular bone category is basically, if it doesn't fit into the other three categories, then it becomes a uh, irregular bone category. Bones that belong to the irregular bone category is the all of the bones of the vertebrae, the hip bones, the coxal bone, the bone, the sphenoid and ethmoid bones, which are bones that make up the floor of the um, skull, all of those bones would have belonged to the irregular bone category. Here is a picture showing you the different types of bone. Notice the bones, the long bone category are the bones that are in the yellow. So here's the humerus bone, ulna and the radius, bones that make up the metatars metacarpals and even the bones of the phalanges, which are your bones in the fingers, are long bones. Your femur bone is a long bone. Your tibia and fibula are your long bones. And the bones of the metatarsals, which are your bones in the foot, and the also the phalanges of the toe, uh, phalange, which are your toe bones, are part of the long bone. Flat bones include the all of the bones in the skull and the face. The also includes the bone that you can't see here is the hyoid bone is a flat bone and then all of the bones in the ribs and the sternum are all categorized as flat bones. And all the bones in the flat bone category are in orange. The irregular bones are in blue which are all of the bones that make up the the spine, the vertebrae, the bones that make up the the uh, hip which are your coxal bone and then your the bone that make up the small of the back, which is your sacrum. Those are all part of the irregular bones in blue. And then the short bones are all in pink, which are bones that make up the wrist, your carpal bones. The patella bone is a short bone. And the bones that make up the, uh, the ankle bones, which are your tarsal bones, are all short bones. There are many different bone markings, and bone markings are therefore uh, are basically features of bones. It could be a bump, or a groove, or a line, or a hole. Any of those markings have a purpose. Projections or processes are any bumps that you might see on bones, and they are they can be a site for uh, ligaments to attach or muscles to attach. And one of those are tuberosity, which is a large, huge bump on a bone. Then you have a trochanter, which is a very large, irregular shape bump. Tubercle is a small bump. Epicondyle is a bump that's above a condyle, which we'll go through, uh, go over later on. And a spine is a ridge, a sharp point on a bone is called a spine. A crest is a narrow ridge. A line is very similar to a crest in that it is a narrow ridge but it's much much uh, thinner than a crest and a process is any kind of tiny bump on a bone. Some bones or bumps on a bone can help form portion of a joint. So a rami, which is the plural of ramus, is an arm like bar, bar of a bone which almost forms like an L shape to a bone. And then a condyle is a round portion that attached to another portion. It's called a condyle. Head, head is somewhat like a head, but it's much more pronounced, meaning that it, it sticks out a little bit more. It's called a head. And a faucet is an attachment of another bone, but it's a flat, almost like a flat surface. Depressions and openings are for a passageway for blood vessel or nerve. A meatus is almost like a 
canal-like passageway. A sinus is a cavity with, which usually is filled with either air and sometimes mucus. A fossa is a shallow dip in the bone. A fissure is like a, a thin slit, a slit of an opening in a bone. And foramen is an overall round opening in bone. So common processes and openings or depressions in bone. Here is a trochanter, which is a large bump. A head is a prominent round surface. Neck is the narrowed portion of, um, of a joint where it's usually attached to a head. A tubercle is a tiny bump. And a faucet is a flat surface where bones attach. Conda is a round portion that attached to another bone. Uh, we have a tuberosity, which is another name for a bump. Then we have a rami, which is like an arm part. See, it, it forms kind of like an L kind of um, joint. Bone, uh, part of a bone is called a rami or ramus. A line is a thin ridge on a bone. A spine is a sharp point, is a spine. And a crest is a large ridge on a bone. And then a foramen, this is a foramen here, is a round or oval opening in bone. The 5.1 notes homework is, number one, which axial appendicular skeleton has more bones? Number two, give three examples of each type of bone. Number three, why are processes, depressions, or openings important to bone?